Hey, Ashley. Get your butt back here immediately. Who do you think you are to storm out on me like, huh? I'm not done with you yet, girl. There is a lesson I need to teach you. I won't come back until you can muster up a sincere apology for me, all right? What? You expect your oh-so-proud mother-in-law to stoop down and apologize to you? Hilarious. You must be living in a fantasy world. Now spill it. Where the hell are you right now? Don't you dare tell me you're out there gallivanting, bad-mouthing your loving mother-in-law. I'm at my parents' house and I won't come back. Oh. Look who's playing the role of a helpless little daughter-in-law. Running back to mommy and daddy whenever things get a tad bit tough, huh? How about you grow a backbone and get your sorry self back here so we can have a proper face-to-face -face conversation like adults? Man up, princess. No way. Why on earth should I bother coming back there? So you can hurl more despicable insults my way? I'm not dumb enough to fall for that. Wow. You really excel at being a pathetic excuse for a daughter-in-law, don't you? Three whole years and still no baby? Even pigs are more fruitful than you. What a disappointment. Did you conveniently forget what the doctors clearly explained? It was all due to the immense stress I've been dealing with. Do you even comprehend the amount of stress and anxiety I have to endure from living under the same roof as you? I've been carrying the burden of both household chores and office work. Because you can't be bothered to lift a finger and contribute anything. What? If you can't even handle the basic task of housework, then what use are you? It's common knowledge that being a daughter-in-law means taking care of your husband's family. It's an unwritten rule that's been around for ages. Get with the program. You didn't marry my son just to play off his clerk, so you cut it out and start pulling your weight at home. Quit with the work nonsense and focus on being a proper homemaker, will you? Do you even comprehend the reason why I have to lend a hand with the office work? It's because your family's liquor business has hit a rough patch. And your husband can't afford to hire more staff. Yet despite all that, you still have the audacity to treat me like some kind of freeloader? What's your deal? Nothing I do ever seems to be sufficient for you. You always find something to nitpick about every little thing I do around the house. Oh, the audacity. How dare you have the nerve to criticize me when all I've done is graciously bestow my superior wisdom upon you to mold you into a better daughter-in-law. Clearly. You should be more grateful for my insightful lessons and stop questioning my impeccable guidance. You had the audacity to throw away all the food I carefully prepared simply because it didn't meet your taste preferences. You incessantly nagged me about having a child, completely disregarding my own feelings. All you've managed to do is pile on more and more stress for me. And that's your idea of bestowing your superior wisdom upon me? Seriously? Remember. Your main job as a bride is to bless my family with an heir. Oh my goodness. There are tons of babies out there. So why can't we have one too? You're the one to blame for all of this. It's all because of your total incompetence as a daughter-in-law. Maybe you should take a long, hard look in the mirror before you start pointing fingers at others. Do you have any consideration for the other people around you? Your family's business is going down the drain. And yet you continue to spend money recklessly as if there's no tomorrow. What? You have the audacity to shift the blame onto me for your own failures? It's your fault for not producing an heir. That's why I ended up buying unnecessary things. 
let's face it. You're nothing but a curse. A burden that brings everyone around you down. Ever since you stepped foot into my house, my family's business has been tumbling like never before. Don't even try to deny it. Can't you understand the reasons behind why I can't have children? It's because of your constant grumbling and negativity that my health started deteriorating. The doctors even advised me to take some rest in a peaceful environment. But let me ask you, how am I supposed to find any rest if I continue to stay with you? Well, fine, then. You can stay there at your parents' house and rest for a while. If you really want to. Wait, hold on a second. Did I hear you correctly? Are you actually agreeing to let me stay at my parents' house? Well, duh. Of course. I agree to let you stay at your parents' house. What's so shocking about that? It's not like I'm some evil mother-in-law from a fairy tale or anything. You can stay there as long as you need until you feel better. No biggie. Oh, all right. I guess. Thanks, I suppose. But are you really sure you can handle everything around the house while I'm away? Oh, please. You think your role in this house is so important and irreplaceable? Give me a break. We'll manage just fine without you, trust me. By the way, in case you're wondering, we are not exactly swamped with things to do right now. All right. I guess I have nothing to worry about then. I'll stay here and take some much-needed rest. And I'll return to your house once I feel better. The next day. Amanda. Why did you send all of my belongings here to my parents' house? What's the meaning behind this? Well, obviously. You've been itching to go back to your parents' house, haven't you? So I decided to grant your little wish and send all your precious belongings there. Do you understand what that means? It means that I have made the decision to return. A useless daughter-in-law who can't even produce an heir, back to your parents. Now it's their problem to deal with. I can't stand having a failure like you lounging around my house doing absolutely nothing any longer. What are you talking about? Did Paul agree to this idea? Oh, absolutely. My son is more than thrilled to kick you out of the house, no doubt about it. Three whole years of marriage and still no baby? Wow. What a complete and utter failure you are. But that's not all. You know. On top of that. You're just weak. And incapable of doing any work. Pathetic. Really. Hey, what do you mean? Isn't Paul also responsible for not having a child? Huh. Are you living in some kind of fantasy world? There's absolutely nothing wrong with my son. He's perfectly normal and healthy. The issue lies solely with you. I couldn't help but notice that your parents also have only one daughter, and that's you, right? It seems like trouble conceiving runs in your family's genes. Guess what? I don't just want any grandchild. I want a grandchild who can carry on my precious family lineage. Do you comprehend the gravity of what I'm saying? Even if you somehow manage to give me a child, T still won't be good enough if it's not a boy. You know what? I don't want to waste any more of my time talking to you. I'll have a conversation with Paul and see what he has to say about all of this. Oh, there's no need for that. 
In fact, my son and I are going to pay a little visit to your house and have a serious talk with your parents. I've made up my mind, and I'm returning you to them. Because let's face it, you're nothing more than a defective product to me now. Having a childless daughter-in-law in my house is utterly useless. Don't you agree? Paul needs to divorce you swiftly and be together with his new bride. This time, it's a bride who isn't a failure and can give us the successor we deserve. Several hours later. Paul. Are you absolutely certain that you're willing to agree to a divorce and let our marriage crumble like that? Have you stopped to consider that throughout the entire conversation at my house? It was only your mother who did a talking while you remained silent? She yelled at me, spud. Hurtful words. And declare that I'm a failure. Yet you just sat there doing nothing. How can you even call yourself a man if you can't find the strength to stand up for the people you claim to love? What do you want me to do? You know I can't go against my mom's wishes, right? Even my dad can't defy her, let alone me. In my family, it's always been my mom who calls the shots. It's just the way things have always has been. Listen, I'm asking for your honest opinion here. So I expect a straight answer. Do you genuinely want to divorce me? Yeah. You heard what my mom had to say, right? She made it pretty clear that she's ready to hire a lawyer and go through with a divorce. And to top it off, she went ahead and sent your stuff to your parents' place. That's a big red flag indicating that she's seriously pissed and doesn't want to see you around our house anymore. You know how intense my mom can get when she's angry, don't you? And let's not forget, she's the type of woman who will stop at nothing to get what she wants. So, this is the end for both of us. If you're not willing to make an effort to save our marriage, then I guess there's no point in me trying to save this either. Hey, here's an idea. What if we go through the divorce legally, but we still continue our relationship in secret? We can keep it low-key, just between us. I promise, no one will ever find out, not even my mom. We just need to be cautious and make sure she doesn't catch us together. You know? What are you even talking about? Your mom made it clear that she already found a new wife for you, remember? And based on your character, I highly doubt you'll have the courage to say no to the girl she chose to be your future wife, right? I mean, technically, I could be with her and still be with you at the same time, you know? Wait. What do you mean by that? And what happens when your mom eventually insists that you marry that girl she chose? What's the big deal? If it comes to that, I can just marry her and have a child like my mom has always wanted. But you should know, my heart will never belong to her. You're the only one I have in my mind. Honestly, that's the most repulsive thing I've ever heard. Look. I have zero interest in being some kind of side flame, alright? Let's just get the divorce finalized and move on from each other once and for all. What? Are you seriously this heartless, giving up on us so easily like it means nothing? It's as if you never even cared about me in the first place. I give you a chance, but you turned it down. So don't even try to blame me for this marriage falling apart. It's all on you. One year later. Ashley, are you there? Please answer me. Can we talk? Paul. Ashley, I'm feeling pretty down right now, and I just want to talk things out with someone. I hope you have a moment to listen to me. Actually, I kind of need you to listen to what I have to say. Well, go ahead and tell me. But... But didn't you just get remarried not too long ago? Shouldn't you be happy instead of sad? Wait, 
Hold up. How do you know that I recently got married again? Who told you about it? Well, guess who spilled the beans? None other than your lovely mom. You know how she can't contain her excitement and always was eager to make me feel miserable. She wasted no time in announcing your engagement to me. And surprise, surprise. She was also the first person to inform me about your wedding. Gosh. Why can't she just keep her trap shut for once? It's so frustrating, honestly. And she also couldn't resist boasting about you and your wife expecting your first baby. Didn't she? Congratulations, by the way. So, what's there to be said about? Everything seems to be going perfectly for you. Having a wife and a child, just like you always wanted, right? After all, your whole life purpose has always been to make your mom happy, isn't it? Look, you don't get it. The truth is, I don't have any feelings for her. I only married her because my mom twisted my arm, not for any other reasons. Plus, I went to the hospital for a fertility checkup recently. What? So you finally went for a checkup? Do you even remember how long I've been telling you to get one? But every time I brought up the topic, you always manage to find a way to avoid it or simply ignore me. I know, I know. But calling the hospital for a fertility checkup is just so embarrassing. And it totally bruises my male pride. You're well aware of that, aren't you? Is your precious male pride more important to you than the person you supposedly love? Fine. Then. Just tell me. What did the test results say? Well, the news isn't great. You know, the doctors told me that. That I'm infertile. What? You're infertile? But... What about the child that your wife is carrying? I was beyond furious when I found out about it, so I confronted my wife. And finally, she admitted to having an affair and confessed that the child she was carrying was not mine. Wow. That's really tough. In that case, it's all the more reason for you to divorce her, right? I mean, she's cheating on you and carrying another man's child. So I'm sure your mom won't have any objections to a divorce. But you don't get it. My wife. She's blackmailing me. She's threatened to expose my infertility to my mom if I ever revealed that the child isn't mine. Can you even imagine how serious this is? If my mom finds out that I can't have kids, she'll flip out. I mean, she'll practically kill me. Well, I'm sorry, but what can I do? It's up to you to gather the courage to face the truth. Or accept the fact that you'll be raising another man's child for the rest of her life. The choice is entirely yours, you know. But that's not the only problem in my life right now. The family business is also going downhill. My mom's spending habits are out of control and only getting worse. She not only took my dad's credit card without his permission, but she's even using company funds to splurge on her expensive items. In other words, she's one of the reasons our family's company is heading towards ruin. Well, I had a feeling something like this would happen. It's your mess, along with your mom's. So you better take responsibility and handle it on your own. Anyway, I have something else important that requires my attention. So I guess I have to cut our conversation short here. Wait, hold on. You can't just leave me hanging like this. I'm your ex-husband, remember? Can you please give me a hand? Just a little bit? Can we please consider getting back together? Ashley?
several days later. Ashley, it's your dear old ex-mother-in-law here. I hope you haven't kicked a bucket or something. So, how's life been treating you? I wouldn't be surprised if you're hiding in some corner, bawling your eyes out for being dumped by a gem like my son. Amanda. Seriously? Don't tell me you're texting me just to chat about this nonsense. By the way, didn't I block your number before? Why do you keep texting me from new numbers? Don't you have any shame? What's wrong with you? Can't a loving mother-in-law check in on her dear daughter-in-law once in a while? Jeez, you're so touchy. Um, excuse me, but aren't you forgetting something? You're no longer my mother-in-law. So don't try to assert any authority over me by using that title. It's not going to work, okay? All right, all right. Haven't you heard the fabulous news? We're throwing a baby shower for Paul's child. And guess what? It's a boy. Jealous, huh? It's something you couldn't manage to do in the whole freaking three years you were with my son. Well, what can I say? Congratulations. But based on what you're telling me, it seems like Paul hasn't bothered to share the latest news with you yet. Maybe you'll never hear about it. But, hey, who am I to judge, right? Honestly, I think it's better that you don't know about it, because once you do, I'm not sure if you can handle it. What's this latest news you're talking about, huh? Just tell me already. I don't have the time or the patience for your little mind games. I'm sorry, but you'll have to ask Paul about that yourself. I've already divorced your son, so I'm just a stranger now to you and to your family. Oh, and by the way, if I were in your shoes, I'd start being more cautious with spending money because your husband's company is on the verge of bankruptcy. Just thought you should know. Huh? What are you talking about? Who told you that? Of course, the business is facing some challenges these days, but there's no need to worry. It's definitely not going bankrupt. Not at all. Haven't you heard anything? My father's company cut off all transactions with your husband's company a few months ago. And just to keep you informed, my father's company also happens to be one of the most crucial business partners for your husband's company. What? I've never heard anything like that before. Wait. Now that I think about it. My husband did mention something like that when you and Paul were together. And you might not be aware of this. But your son and husband actually came to my house to apologize to me and my parents. They pleaded, expressing remorse for their actions and asking my father to reconsider their trade relationship. But, of course, my father didn't pay any attention to them. He made it clear that they were only doing business out of respect for the former president. And that's no longer the case. But, I don't understand. Why did my husband have to go to such lengths? Why didn't he just give up and find another trading partner? Is your father a company really that crucial for our business? Well, all I can say is that my father's company is a significant client and brings in good profits. As it turns out, all of your husband's other trading partners have been pressuring him for lower prices making it hard for him to make any profit. However, my father's company, due to their relationship with your husband and his father, hadn't asked for any price deductions. 
so when they decided to end the transactions, it put your husband and son in a tough spot to manage the business. I have a strong feeling that your husband will be closing the company pretty soon. What? How is that even possible? Are you saying our family's business is falling apart? Well, your husband actually mentioned to me that he had been contemplating shutting down the company for quite some time now. Due to ongoing losses, he put in a lot of effort to pass it on to your son. But unfortunately, Paul isn't naturally skilled in leadership. So, I'm not sure how much longer it will be until the company eventually closes down. No way. If the company goes bankrupt, where am I going to get the funds to sustain my luxurious lifestyle? What about my fancy clothes, pricey handbags, indulgent spa treatments, and all that jazz? Am I supposed to bid farewell to all of it now? No. I absolutely refuse to accept this. It feels like some messed up joke. What? I've never heard anything like that before. Your family's business is on the verge of collapse, and all you care about is your own selfish desires? You're truly beyond help, Amanda. Anyway, I need to discuss some business matters with my dad. If you don't have anything else to add, I think it's best to end our conversation here. No. You can't just bail on me like that. You need to clarify everything for me. Let's meet up and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Ashley. Several days later. Ashley. Can you please give it another shot? My mom found out about a situation between my wife and me, and she went ballistic. She disowned me, calling me useless for not being able to have kids, and then kicked me. My wife and her child are out of the house. Well, that's quite harsh, isn't it? Shortly after that, my wife dropped divorce papers on me and vanished without a single word the next morning. She even left her child behind for me to take care of. What am I supposed to do now? I really don't want to raise another man's child. It deeply hurts my pride as a man. Honestly, I'm not sure what advice to give you right now. Maybe you could try to locate her or her lover and ask them to take responsibility for raising the child. Either way, the safety and well-being of the child should be the top priority. But with my family's company going bankrupt, I'm pretty much jobless now. How on earth am I supposed to find the money and take care of the baby? You could consider reaching out to various organizations for assistance or start looking for a new job to earn the money needed to take care of the baby. It may not be too difficult if you think about it. Ashley, can we please give it another try? You know I still love you, and I've never stopped. I'm willing to bet that you still have feelings for me, too, right? So let's come back together and raise this child as a team. We can reunite and be one big, happy family again. Just like we were before. No way, Paul. How can you claim to love me when you never once had the guts to stand up for me against your mom? In my eyes, you're nothing but a big coward. Why don't you go running back to your mommy and cry for help? I'm actually glad I got rid of a mama's boy like you and a monster-in-law like your mother. Don't even think about begging for us to get back together, because it's never going to happen. This mess is all you're doing, so you better deal with it on your own. Not long after the companies collapsed, my ex-father-in-law decided to file for divorce leaving my ex-mother-in-law to handle all the debts on her own. Amanda, abandoned by her ex-husband, tried to locate her son, Paul, and eventually ended up living with him in his cramped apartment. However, Paul's intentions were far from noble. 
he left the responsibility of caring for his illegitimate child with his mother while he drowned himself in alcohol day in and day out. Despite his attempts to reach out and apologize, I chose to maintain silence. During my difficult post-divorce period, a supportive friend from work came into my life. He is an amazing person with strong principles and he truly captured my heart. After dating for about a year, we had the wedding we had always dreamed of. And when I thought things couldn't get any better, we were blessed with a baby.